We can do a variation of the previous method of validating a serial number. This variation will not require the user to press a button in order to do the validation. This change will be easy because we laid the majority of the groundwork in the last example. Let's modify the dialog so that the custom action will be called when they click the next button. They won't be allowed to go forward if the serial number is not valid. First thing we're going to do is delete the validate text control and the validate push button control. Now let's go to the behaviors and on the next event what we want to do is create a new event and we're going to call the custom action when they click the next button. So let's call do action. We will call the validate serial number custom action and the condition will be one. For this to be called, we've got to move it to the top of the list. So it's always called first when they click the next button. That way the serial number will always be validated. So since we place the do action event first, the custom action will be called first and the installer will wait until it comes back before it tries to do any of this other stuff. In this case, if the serial number is valid, we don't need to display a message, just allow the user to continue. So let's go back and take out the message for when the number is valid. We'll go back to the install script function. Validate serial number. We're going to take out the calls to message box when the serial number is valid. And that is this one right here. But we'll leave the call to set the property because the property needs to be set because that's what's going to be checked. Let's build it. Let's test the user interface. Okay, here we are. Let's just click the next button with nothing in the serial number. Notice there's a little bit of a delay because it's calling the custom action, but this is not a valid serial number, so we get the message box. Let's put an invalid serial number in and try that. That doesn't work either. We should be able to go on. Oh, I forgot to build it after I made the change. Okay, let's build it. Now we'll run it again. This time we'll just put a good serial number in in the beginning. Okay, something's wrong here. What? Well, silly me. I commented out the wrong thing. I commented out the property instead of the message box. Very silly. I'll put in a valid serial number. Now it behaves properly. So that is your second method of validating a serial number.